This shot of a train pulling into a station may not seem special to you, but the legend is that when it was first shown to an audience in 1896, they screamed and fled the room. The truth is that the creation of the moving image challenged our perception of what reality was. Over a century later, our perception of reality is being challenged once more. Whoa. Yeah? Whoa. That's pretty nifty. The Rift, a virtual reality device being developed by Oculus VR, offers users a new mind-bending experience. I've always been a big gamer, I love video games, and that always was a drive behind virtual reality. When I was a teenager, I spent most of my money on my PC gaming rig, always trying to get that absolute best experience possible. I was like, what is the ultimate gaming experience? The obvious answer was virtual reality. Virtual reality goes back to 1968, when Ivan Sutherland created the very first virtual reality headset. Even as the technology developed, Virtual reality units were bulky, costly, and the experience often left people nauseous, disoriented, and at the very least, underwhelmed. The very best VR equipment that was available were all very heavy, usually a narrow field of view, lots of latency in the head tracking, so a lot of delay between when you would turn your head and when the image would react. I really started to seriously tackle this problem, trying to figure out how I could make a better VR headset than what currently existed. Palmer spent several years building various prototypes in his pursuit of a device that could accurately create a feeling of being in another world. Eventually, he founded Oculus VR, and with a roster of engineers, they began to tackle the issues, starting with replicating what the human eye sees. We've made our displays go faster than most displays ever need to go because it needs to trick your brain into believing it's real rather than just being a window on a screen. You really, really need um, high frame rates and, and low persistence. Image clarity was just one issue that had to be tackled when developing the Rift. The real task was creating a system that synchronized the movement of the user's head with what they were seeing on the screen. So this is DK1, our first development kit. that has a gyroscope, magnetometer, and accelerometer on board, running at about 1,000 hertz. A big issue with DK1 was that it had difficulty tracking the position of the user's head. The vestibular system in your ear contributes to your sense of balance and spatial orientation. Any discrepancy between what this system feels and what your eye sees can result in motion sickness. So the team at Oculus created a more refined version, DK2. DK2 uses a fusion between our inertial system and an external fixed camera that is able to track the movements of the headset as it translates through space. It uses a process called sensor fusion to take all of the different data from all these sensors and mix them together into something that is very close to perfectly accurate. To make sure the device is working properly, Oculus uses a robotic arm to test the tracking system. The robot arm allows us to move a headset through certain patterns. So we can compare the data from our tracking system and what we know the robot is doing from its own internal measurements. And we can compare the two to make sure that they're lining up. This process helps the development team match the user's head movement with what they're seeing on screen. So you won't need any Dramamine. We're always hammering away at the same problems. We're trying to reduce latency, reduce cost, reduce weight, and create better ways to interact with the virtual world. After decades of pursuing a functional virtual reality unit, thanks to the team at Oculus, the proverbial train has left the station. Technology is always getting better. The processors will get better, the GPUs will get better, the screens will get better. There's no reason to think that that's going to stop anytime soon. For Science Friday, I'm Christian Baker. <laughs>